learn about water garden maintenance. Joining us as an expert on that subject, we welcome Mike Miller from Pond Pro in Shawnee. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Kim. I think that when people have water gardens, one of the things they really struggle is, or forget about, is the just day-to-day -day maintenance that can help prevent a lot of problems in the garden. That's right. Generally, there's a couple of times a year when you have to do some good maintenance, mm -hmm. spring and fall, but there's general maintenance that should be done all along. Yeah. I usually try to explain to people that if they'll start at the outside of the pond and work their way in, that's going to be the best. Okay. Uh, and what? by the outside, I mean where your rocks are. We want to make sure that there's no groundwater running in. Okay. We want to make sure that your pond is not over full and running out. That's especially important when you look at a waterfall or a stream. And how are we going to know if things are moving in, if the water's coming into our pond? Well, you're going to see usually dirt mm -hmm. coming in. You're going to see mulch because most people have yeah. mulch around their ponds. So you're going to see that. Your pond water quality is going to go downhill. Mm -hmm. And that's usually a dead giveaway that you've got something occurring that shouldn't be in your pond. Okay. Now, other things, maintaining that water quality has a lot to do with managing our organic matter, is that right? That's right, okay. that's right. And that, that's really the first thing that we want to look at. If we look here, we could use a net and dip out things that don't belong, things that have fallen into the mm -hmm. water. Here's a blossom yeah. from these beautiful plants behind us. <laughs> so we could take that out. Okay. That's an important consideration mm -hmm. for you to make sure your, your leaves and other organics that fall in from outside get taken right. out. Right, yeah, but. I see a lot of pine needles and sticks uh -huh. in there that we would want to clean out. And those pine needles and nuts, things like that, are going to cause your water to turn brown. And that's mm -hmm. really hard to get rid of, too. Okay. Um, what about the foliage on the plants themselves? You'll see some here. If we look mm -hmm. over here, we've got some that are dying and falling down and getting in the water. Uh, those need to be taken out. You might want to use uh, some sort of a long handle tool, mm -hmm. something like this, a lopping shears that most of, most of your pond people have out in the yard and where you can reach in and cut that off yeah. and then pull it out. And there's some available that have up to three foot or even yes. telescoping handles that make your reach go a little farther. Make it a lot easier to take out. Mm -hmm. But just stop and think, any of that organic matter, whether it's from a plant in the pond or outside, needs to be gotten out. Okay. What about stuff along the bottom, things that maybe have fallen down and you're starting to get a little bit of muck along you're, the bottom of the gonna pond? You're going to have muck generally mm -hmm. caused by fish and okay. fish waste. And when you feed fish, most folks overfeed their fish. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of undigested food that just sinks to the bottom and creates that muck. All of the organic matter, dust and dirt, we don't have very much wind in Oklahoma, but, oh, no. <laughs> but we've got, we always get a lot of things that blow in, yeah. and so that sinks to the bottom and creates that. You can use a, a net similar oh, okay. to this to reach down in the bottom. Okay. This particular one telescopes, so you could make it reach all the way down in there if you needed to, mm -hmm. and scoop out as much of that as you can. You have to work carefully because you don't want to disturb your plants, right. your lilies, and I noticed mm -hmm. your lilies are all in pots. That's good. Mm -hmm. That helps with general maintenance. Okay. If you don't do that, they're going to grow into that muck down in the bottom, yeah. and it makes it a lot tougher to clean in. Absolutely. Yeah, I try to wrestle the roots out from the dirt. That's right. Are there other tools that we need for cleaning yes, the water the, garden? The biggest thing that we use frequently, mm -hmm. and a lot of our pond owners have, is a pond vac. Okay. There's a big difference between a pond vac mm -hmm. and a shop vac. Right. A shop vac, which most everyone has, fills up mm -hmm. and then you have to stop, take the lid off and go dump it right. and come back and start over. And if you pick up, say, 10 gallons of water, that's 80 pounds. So that's a lot of weight <laughs> yeah, to be moving around. That's true. A pond vac has two cylinders in it. Okay. Okay. One cylinder is filling up while the other one is discharging. So it has a discharge hose on the back that you might lay out somewhere where fertile water is going to do you some good, like your garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'd want to have that where it's not going to dump back into the pond. Right. You want it to go out into the garden. And then we've got lots of different tools that you can use. Uh, this one opens, opens up, up mm -hmm. so you can get that sludge out of the bottom. But right. if you have rocks in the bottom of your pond, you may want to close that 
mm -hmm. so that... Oh, we have just a small opening. That's right, mm -hmm. so the smaller rocks won't get sucked up by your vacuum. Are there other important ends that we want to look for? Yes, mm -hmm. you can find something here that'll fit almost anywhere in your pond. This one, for instance, has a sharp edge on it, mm -hmm. and if you have string algae growing off the rocks, you could use that to cut that algae, and then the vacuum would suck it up. That's another important one. You have a brush, so if you have a flat piece of stone, in your pond that's covered with sludge, you can brush it off. Brush off. This one works very well on the patio around, or if you don't have rocks in the bottom of your pond, it would work uh, on the liner to mm -hmm. get rid of some of that sludge. I use one of these on my swimming pool every week. <laughs> now you mentioned algae, and a lot of what we just discussed is a good way to start managing algae, but that's another big uh, maintenance issue. It is and, and we think that probably the best defense against algae is a good offense and that has to do with general maintenance. If mm -hmm. we will maintain that and keep a lot of those nutrients out of the water then we won't have near as much algae. But I, I think an important consideration is what is clear water. Yes. Here mm -hmm. in the United States we believe that clear water is if you can put a 24 inch tape measure down in your pond and still see the silver tip at the end of it. That's clear water. Mm -hmm. It's not like your swimming pool or your bath water. Yeah, we don't need to see three or four feet down. That's mm -hmm. right, that's right. All right, well, thank you so much, Mike. Thank you for having me.